Hello everyone and welcome to this fly tying video. Today we're going to tie a really easy fly. This one is the American pheasant tail which is a slight variation of the classic pheasant tail invented by Frank Sawyer in England. And his version was made out of copper wire and pheasant tail and that's all there was to it. This one has a little bit more bling to it, just a little bit more pop. But here we go with this pheasant tail and this is going to be a part of this series of a little bit easier flies, a little bit more explained and I think I will make a playlist with named easy flies or fly tying for beginners or something like that. So this one is going to be the first one. I've already made a pheasant tail nymph on the channel but here I'm going to revisit some of my old patterns and just talk a little bit more about them, explain a little bit more, just make a better video of these really classic and good patterns that I, I wanted to do this for a little bit of time so now it's time to do it. As always if you want to jump the materials list just click the link or the timestamp in the description below and you will jump straight to the tying but here I'm going to explain in detail all the materials just a little bit behind the materials so the first one here in the vise I have a nymph hook this one is the Tiemco 113 BLH BL is for barbless I like to tie all my flies on barbless hooks just makes my life and the life of the fish a lot easier or you can use any nymph hook that you like you could also tie these on slightly longer shanked hooks it will just represent other mayfly species or maybe stoneflies. So any kind of nymph hook that, or any kind of hook that you like, you can tie this on. This one is a size 16, but you can tie these up to 12, 10 if you want to imitate really big nymphs or down to 18, 20 if you want to imitate these small, small mayfly nymphs. Then the thread, as always, I'm going to use the Nano Silk from Semperfly. This one is their 18 oat in beige, so it's about 30 denier, so really thin but extremely strong. This is really the best thread I've ever used, so I use it on most or all my nymphs patterns. Also on the dry flies, this will build up no bulk, but you can really pull on the materials to get them to stay exactly where you want. This is perfect thread for all the flies I'm tying. And as the name may suggest we are going to use some pheasant tail. And pheasant tail you can get in almost any color that you want. This one has been dyed in olive. You could also go with a natural, black, red, yellow, pretty much any color that you want. If you change color it will just represent another insect or another mayfly or a stonefly. So you can really test out all the colors that you want and find the one that works best for you. And with pheasant tail you have to look out for a few things when shopping around for these. Usually they sell them in two packs, so you have two feathers in one pack. And you really have to look out for... If we look at this feather, you will see that one end has a lot brighter colors and also these nicely marked or you can see the actual fibers. This one, the fibers are a whole lot softer, tips are not good. So, so this is one of the side feathers of um, pheasant tail. If you buy them in the clump, like the whole tail, you will get two really nice feathers with these stiff fibers on both sides. Then you will also get two that looks like this, with the soft ones on one side and then the stiff ones on the other side. So if you buy the pheasant tail clump, you will get six sides that are good. And then you will get these that you can use for wing cases or wing buds, so they are not wasted. But what you're looking for is these really nice stiff pheasant tail fibers. So you really have to look out for or really search through and see both feathers before you buy them because else you can get stuck with one of these or two of these in one pack and this is really not good value if you buy these ones two of these in one pack you will all only get two good sides out of four so 
try to find these and if you can find some that have these really long fibers as well this is a plus and then to rib the fly I'm going to use some of this soft wire this is from uni you could also use the ultra wire from UTC it's about the same this one is a size small and the other ones you also get in size small so the size small works well for a size uh, 16 like this this one is in copper the copper works well with this olive color olive brown here but you could also use any color that you want if you have if you tie this in black with a black pheasant tail you maybe don't want to use the copper you can use some gold or silver or black or chartreuse just to make any color combination that you want just mix and match and see what works best for you then for the thorax I'm going to use some dubbing on this one the classic American pheasant tail calls for pico curl but pico curl is a little bit difficult to work with if you haven't tied a lot of flies it's also not durable at all so if you get something stuck like a fish tooth right in there it will just break it away and your fly will look really not so good so there are a few techniques that you can use to get a durable pico curl thorax i've shown that in some of my other videos but here the really easy pattern i'm going to use some dubbing and for this my favorite is ice dub and they have a color that is called peacock so this is the substitute that you would use if you want to have this classic peacock look to it but with dubbing instead so this one is called ice dub peacock this is I think the old one, I bought it a few years ago, if you can see this is this kind of bright green with copper highlights and then recently they changed the colors, I don't know if you can see it but it's a lot darker and a whole lot more copper highlights in it, it just changed a little bit, it's also called as the peacock but they just changed the color a little bit, nowadays I think you can only get this one works well as well and this will make for a really nice thorax with some spikier fibers sticking out representing even more the legs or the gills on these flies and it will have the classic look to it but what I'm going to use on this one is another ice top and this one is in the color pheasant tail so this is slightly different it will it's more like a brown with green highlights I really like this one I haven't used it too much yet but really nice dubbing so that's all the materials that you need for this fly three materials and the thread and the hook so it's not really that much and not expensive at all so this is a really good fly to start tying so what I'm going to do is to start the thread a little bit behind the eye put down a few turns of thread and here I want to go down to about the half point on the hook and I'm going to tie in the pheasant tail going down I just prefer doing it this way it will build up a little less bulk as well so here I'm going to take my pheasant tail, this one has been dyed in olive, but as I said you can tie it in any color that you want. And I'm going to take five fibers off the stem, and what you want to do is to align these, you want to put them 90 degrees from the stem, and this is going to align the tips, and here I had one tip that was broken, so I'm going to take six, and then pull out the broken one. So here I have these five, six fibers neatly aligned and I'm going to just tear these off and this is going to keep all the fibers aligned and then I take out the broken one and then here you want to choose how long you want the tail to be you don't want it to be too long or it will easily break off and not too short as well or the fly will not look so good and 
the effect or you want to represent a tail as well as if we were tying it the right length and the right length for this it really depends on how how you want it but slightly shorter than the length of the shank or here we have one quite good measure is from the hook point to the eye this is about the length that I want on my flies but you don't have to be that precise when you tie these in what I like to do is to tie them in on my way down just turn two and here you can see that these are quite long so what I'm going to do is to pull on the ends just a little bit make sure that you pull all at the same time so you don't mess up the alignment of the tail and I'm just going to pull till I feel that the tail is long enough or short enough I should say as I'm making it shorter and there maybe I feel that it's a good length I'm going to pull just a little bit more and there perfect so this is the way I do you don't have to be too precise with the measures and it's going to come if you tie a whole bunch of these flies or just any kind of fly you will start to feel or see when the tail is long enough and it just a preference all maybe someone will tie this a little bit longer a little bit shorter it really doesn't matter it's just what you feel is right for you and that's going to make the best looking fly for you and you're going to fish it so that's the only thing I can say about the length of the tails on these flies here I maybe went a few steps too fast but I'm taking this down to the band and then what I do is I take one turn underneath the tail, just around the hook. And here as you can see, when I pull, it's going to lift up the fibers slightly. And it's also going to splay these out just a little bit. And then one turn over to secure. And this is also going to make a little base here at the back so the tail won't go down like this but stay leveled with the shank of the hook and this is the way I like my flies to look so this is what I do for these I use the exact same technique for my dry flies to get a nice splayed tail so it looks a whole lot sparser than it actually is you have to remember that these mayflies are really neat little insects with only three tails here we have five so you don't want to have like this compact bundle here at the back this won't represent the tail as well as if they're splayed out just a little bit if you want to tie like really realistic ones you can cut away two of these but nature will do it for you when you get the fish or if you get stuck on a rock or anything these will have a tendency to break off one at a time but the fly will last for quite a long time even though it's these materials are not the strongest in the world then on the way up we have to tie in the rib and this is to minimize the bulk on the fly and here I've taken off about 15-20 centimeters or so and this is going to make a whole lot of flies you don't want to cut off a really short piece of this or it's going to be really difficult to wind it on as you're going to use your fingers to do this and then I'm going to tie this in on my side the whole length of the body so here you can see that this is going up to about the one third part or the one two third point on the hook going from the back or the one third point going from the eye and here I'm going to tie this in on my side and I want to keep the pheasant tail on top so I'm just going up touching turns and here the thread torque is going to want to move the wire to the other side but you just have to push it back with your finger 
and make sure that it stays on your side. This will make for a nice neat little fly. And then up to this critical one third point as you will usually see in books that you should have two thirds of the shank is the body then one third is the thorax and this is going to be the measures of this one as well and here I'm going to bring back the pheasant tail I'm going to fold it over and I'm going to take a few turns down to where we tied in the tail and the rib and then back up again and here you can see that it's a lot easier with long fibers like this I still have quite a few fibers or quite some length to work with if these were a little bit shorter you would have to stop maybe at the half point here with the pheasant tail and instead of tying it in at the beginning in the middle you would have to tie it in right here at the back and then fold it back then the best friend when fly tying is a little bit of super glue this is going to make your flies so much more durable and will help you in many ways so a thin coat over and then I'm going to bring up the pheasant tail and here you want these to cover the whole shank just make sure that you bring this up and if you have a rotary device you can use it right now it makes it a little bit easier to tie on and if you have really short fibers a rotary device can be a nice help in this so there I took these up the same way as I wind my thread going this way if you can see it and I just prefer to wind on all my materials on this way and then once you reach the thread tie it off cut off the ends and then I'm going to take up the wire as well and I'm going the same way here you can also counter wrap this going the opposite way but I don't see any need to do it on these small flies and also with the super glue it's going to be really secure then about five six turns or so with a the wire then when you reach the thread put a 90 degree bend into the wire and we can then tie it off and what I like to do is to go up a few millimeters just to help with the shape of the thorax then bend and break the wire away and now we're up at the eye and here we're going to tie in both the thorax cover and the legs at the same time and for this we're using the pheasant tail again this time I want to take six fibers off the stem and as we did for the tail we want to align these and then tear them off and here we want to tie these in facing forward about the same length as the tails we're then going to fold these back on both sides and we want these to extend about to the whole length of the body or slightly shorter normally to the point of the hook but here you can really choose if you want these a little bit longer to make a wider profile or a little bit shorter just make small legs but the mayflies usually have quite big legs so here I'm going to tie this facing forward with a pinch wrap and here you can see that these are out over the eye make sure that these are right in the middle and this is about the length of fibers that I want and then I'm going to take this back the whole way to the body and here we can see where the thorax is going to be it's going to be between here and the eye and here you want to keep this on top as well as this is going to be the thorax cover 
Then I'm going to take this eye stub in the color pheasant tail. And here you really don't need much, especially on these size 16s. You just want to cover the thread. As with all dubbing, you just want to cover the thread. You don't want to build up a thick noodle onto the thread or you won't have a very long lasting fly. And here I'm going to take this from the back to the front and I'm going to add just a tiny amount more and here you can see that we have these this eye stub is going to have these a little bit spiky fibers sticking out representing maybe the gills or even more legs and then once we reach the eye we have these fibers sticking out towards the front and we're going to split these in two, three on each side and make sure that you get these right and then pull back we can then make a few turns right in front just behind the eye and there we have the tail sticking out or the legs sticking out on each side then we're going to bring the thorax cover over and this is going to splay these out even more and push them down just a little bit then three turns to secure this then pull back and pull all the materials back and I'm going to make a few turns right behind the eye then we can cut off the ends really close and a few more turns just to bind down and then take your whip finish tool and we're going to make a neat little head on this fly here I like to have the thread a little bit more seen so, so here I'm going to do two whip finish knots and I'm going to build up a small head on the fly then cut the thread off and here we can see that we have these legs sticking out on each side and these will really represent the legs of the mayfly and I think this dubbing mix or this uh, eye stub is going to represent the gills a little bit and then as the last thing to do is to put a little bit of super glue onto the head as well and this is going to make a really durable fly and it's also going to make the head look a little bit nicer we just have to make sure that no glue is in the eye or the fly won't ever be able or you won't ever be able to fish with a fly. So there we have the American pheasant tail. Thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. See you next time and happy time!